specimen paper 2023 it is paper 2 multiple choice start with question number 1 a gaseous substance is slowly cooled and temperature recorded every second so this is a cooling curve and in the beginning substance is present in gas phase now note the change in temperature uh, when you move uh, till this point you can see that the temperature has been decreased much but then there comes a stage when there is no more change in temperature so this happens when gas changes to liquid so at this point gas is being converted into liquid and when you are cooling this further the temperature of this liquid is decreasing and again a stage comes when there is no more change in temperature you can say that this is freezing point of that substance and at this stage this liquid will get converted into solid so the question is at which point is the substance a solid so D will be the right response for this question question number two a gas is released at point Q which gas changes the color of damp universal indicator paper most quickly now there are four gases ammonia carbon dioxide chlorine and hydrogen out of these four gases hydrogen has no effect on damp universal indicator paper so eliminate this option now we have left with three gases ammonia turn indicator paper blue because it is basic carbon dioxide uh, turns indicator paper red because it is an acidic gas and chlorine uh, bleaches out the universal indicator paper we have to identify the gas uh, that will affect the indicator paper more quickly so this question is related to diffusion the gas with least relative molecular mass uh, will reach this universal indicator paper more quickly so identify the one that has lowest value for MR so out of these three gases the lowest value of MR is for ammonia so option A is right here question number three which statement describes the bonding in sodium chloride sodium chloride is an ionic compound and we know that in ionic compound there are oppositely charged ions that are held together by strong force of attraction so look at option a a shared pair of electrons between two atoms no this is true for covalent bonding so eliminate this one a strong force of attraction yes there is a strong force of attraction oppositely charged ions yes both these things are correct so option b is right if you look at option C, a strong force of attraction, yes, there is a strong force of attraction between the molecules, no, that is not true for sodium chloride, it is an ionic compound and ionic compound does not contain molecules. A weak force of attraction, no, ionic compound has strong force of attraction, oppositely charged ions, this is correct, but the force is not weak, so that's why this option cannot be right. Question number four. The lead in pencil is made of a mixture of graphite and clay. When the percentage of graphite is increased, the pencil moves across the paper more easily. Which statement explains this observation? Now you are increasing the percentage of graphite and what is the result of this? The result of this is that pencil moves across the paper more easily. It means that now it has more lubricating effect we have studied in the syllabus that graphite is used as a lubricant so here option C is correct for question number 4 question number 5 which statement about metals is not correct look at option A they conduct electricity because delocalized electrons can move throughout the metal so this is true for the metals and this cannot be the right option because we have to find the one that is not correct option B they consist of layers of atoms that can slide over each other and yes we know that metals are malleable metals are ductile their property is due to the fact that they consist of the layers and yes that layers can slide over each other so this is also uh, true regarding metals so that cannot be the right option if you look at option C they have a giant lattice of oppositely charged ions in a sea of 
delocalized electrons if you look at the structure of metals there is c of negative electrons but there are only positive ions present inside this c of negative electrons now in option c it is saying that they have giant lattice of oppositely charged ions no they don't have oppositely charged ions they only have positively charged ions and that positively charged ions are submerged in c of delocalized electrons so that is the correct response for this question because we had to identify the statement that is not correct now look at option d they have a giant lattice of positive ions in a sea of delocalized electrons this is also true because you can see there are positive ions and yes these ions are in sea of delocalized electrons this statement is true but that option cannot be right because we have to find the one that is not correct number 6 aqueous iron 3 sulfate and aqueous sodium hydroxide react to give a precipitate of iron hydroxide and a solution of sodium sulfate what is the balanced symbol equation for this reaction first look at option a fe2 there are two iron atoms on left side on right hand side there is single fe so that cannot be right option because iron atoms are not balanced we don't have to look at the equation further now option b fe2 there are two iron atoms on the left side on right side of the equation there is a single atom of iron so also eliminate this option option c fe2 two iron atoms fe is being multiplied by 2 so yes there are two iron atoms so4 sulfate being multiplied by 3 so there are three sulfate ions on right side there is so4 and they are multiplying it by 3 so it is balanced now come to sodium there are six sodium atoms on right side na2 and it is being multiplied by 3 so 3 cross 2 it is also 6 and oxygen atom you can collectively say there is oh oh being multiplied by 6 so on left side there is oh and it is being multiplied by 3 and this 3 multiply by 2 so it is also 6 so th this equation is perfectly balanced that is the correct response so what's wrong with option d 2 into 2 4 iron atoms and there are 4 no problem with that so4 sulfate group being multiplied by the 3 So there are three sulfate groups. Now comes to the right side. There, here comes sulfate, SO4, uh, being multiplied by six. So that is not balanced because there are six sulfate and here it were uh, three sulfate groups. So eliminate this option as well. Option C is correct. Question number seven. Which information is needed to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element? As you know, the formula for relative atomic mass is um, the mass of first isotope multiply relative abundance of first isotope uh, plus mass of second isotope multiply it by relative abundance of second isotope and so on uh, you will continue this and divide it upon 100 so in this way you get the relative atomic mass so for this you need two things one is the mass of each isotope and second is the relative abundance of each isotope so option c is correct the mass number and abundance of each of its isotopes is needed to calculate the relative atomic mass question number 8 the equation for reaction between sodium carbonate and excess dilute hydrochloric acid is shown so there is an equation sodium carbonate is reacted with hcl and nacl water and carbon dioxide are produced in this reaction when 26.5 gram of sodium carbonate reacts with excess dilute hydrochloric acid what is the maximum volume of carbon dioxide produced so what is given in the question uh, remember that whenever you are doing stoichiometry questions you have to convert the given information to moles of that substance so let's find the moles of uh, sodium carbonate moles equals mass in gram so here it is 26.5 over mr for sodium carbonate and mr for sodium carbonate can be calculated it is 23 cross 2 for sodium and 12 for carbon and 16 cross 3 for oxygen uh, if you add up these values you will get 106 gram for 1 mole okay now put this value here 106 gram per mole and solve this and you will get 0.25 moles of sodium carbonate now what to do with these moles the second step in solving the stoichiometry questions is to look at the mole ratio 
now Na2CO3 this is given and CO2 carbon dioxide you have to find now look at this the coefficient in the balanced chemical equation for sodium carbonate is 1 the coefficient for carbon dioxide is also 1 so mole ratio is 1 ratio 1 what does it mean it means 1 mole of sodium carbonate uh, will react completely with that Cl to give 1 mole of carbon dioxide so if there are 0.25 moles of sodium carbonate then we will get 0.25 moles for the carbon dioxide this was the first step this was the second step last step is to convert this moles to volume now how to do that we know that volume of gas at room temperature and pressure can be calculated by multiplying moles with volume of one mole and that is fixed value the value is 24 and if you multiply this by 0.25 you will get 6 decimeter cube and you have to remember this formula whenever you have to change moles to volume you will simply multiply the moles of a gas by 24 decimeter cube if the answer is asked in centimeter cube then you additionally have to multiply this answer by 1000 to get it in centimeter cube so here the right answer is option a that is 6 decimeter cube question number 9 a volumetric pipette is used to measure 25 centimeter cube and uh, now this is volume of 2 mole per decimeter cube mole per decimeter cube is unit of concentration so here we have concentration and volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide into a conical flask the whole apparatus is set up for titration the equation is given uh, the re reaction requires 50 centimeter cube of uh, sulfuric acid to reach the end point what is the concentration of dilute sulfuric acid in mole per decimeter cube now first convert the given concentration and volume to moles the number of moles equals concentration multiplied by volume concentration is 2 mole per decimeter cube and volume is 25 centimeter cube so convert this 25 centimeter cube to decimeter cube now we know that uh, 1 decimeter cube equals 1000 centimeter cube now solve this 2 into 25 and then divide it upon uh, 1000 and you will get here 0 0.05 moles next step is to compare the moles of sodium hydroxide to the moles of sulfuric acid by using this balanced equation by looking at the equation you will notice that the mole ratio for NaOH to H2SO4 is equal to 2 ratio 1 now the number of moles for sodium hydroxide is 0 0.05 we have no idea about the moles of sulfuric acid so write it as x 2 by 1 so solve for x and you will get 0.05 upon 2 the answer for x will be 0 0.025 moles these are the moles of sulfuric acid that are actually consumed to react completely with 0 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide now the question is about concentration and not about the moles so what is the concentration concentration equals moles upon volume we have calculated the moles for sulfuric acid that is 0 0.025 the volume is given it is 50 we need the volume in uh, decimeter cube because we have to find concentration in mole per decimeter cube so convert this volume the volume of sulfuric acid is 50 upon 1000 and you will get 0 0.05 decimeter cube now put this value here above 0 0.05 decimeter cube now solve this using your calculator uh, 0 0.025 upon 0 0.05 the answer is 0 0.50 mole per decimeter cube question number 10 the diagram shows a circuit used to electrolyze aqueous copper to sulfate which arrow indicates the movement of copper ions in electrolyte and of the electrons in the external circuit so, copper ions carry plus 2 charge and you have already studied that copper ions move toward cathode where they pick up electrons it means electrons are coming towards cathode and these copper ions will pick up electrons at the cathode so what arrow is uh, showing the movement of copper ions this is 2 so in the first column for copper ions the 2 is correct 1 is 
not because one is showing the movement of copper ions towards anode. Now come to electrons. Electrons are coming towards the cathode and these electrons are going back to the circuit here. Anode is uh, transferring or turning these electrons back to the power supply. So basically there will be arrow up and here it will be arrow down. So this arrow is not correct. The three, this point is correct. So this is correct response and this is not. So by looking at both things, copper ions and electrons, you will come to know that option C is correct.